So everybody knows what's going on in Hawaii, or do we? Because there seems to be some sort of media blackout where they're not letting people in, aid's not getting to the correct uh, areas in time, there were roadblocks during the fire, people had to flee to the shore and get in the water, there's missing children, there's just no information coming. So basically what I mean when I say that we know what happened is uh, we, we only know that there's a fire. And I think it's important to highlight this, I think it's important that we keep our eyes on this and ask questions about why we're not being allowed and why media is not being allowed to report to the American public what's going on with citizens of the United States of America in Hawaii. It's been 22 days since a massive fire destroyed the town of Lahaina on Maui. 2,000 homes incinerated, uh, hundreds of people killed in an area largely owned and lived in by longtime Native Islanders. The rest of Maui was remarkably fine. It's amazing how that worked, but that didn't stop the governor, by the way, from telling tourists, hey, stay away from Maui. Maui is closed to tourists, and it worked. I spoke to friends today on Maui and other sources who say it's virtually a ghost town this morning. Uh, tour tourism has basically totally dried up all the way on the other side of the island that is totally untouched. Hotels are open, but no one is going to Maui. So the governor's declaration, stay away, is really, really working. Uh, tourism is the lifeblood of this island. And, of course, this is like a return to COVID era when no one could travel there. And it's devastating to this economy. Real estate developers have already swooped in. They've been making big money offers to buy up the burned land, land, um, land that these native islanders uh, spent years saying no. There's up to 2,000 school children still missing and I'm not aware of what the efforts are to find them or what what has become of them sadly I, I don't get a good feeling about what the the outcome of this is going to be no to selling we're not going to sell this we've taken offers and fielded offers for years we're not going to sell it now of course these offers are pouring in left and right it's been 22 days and still the atf hasn't released any official cause of the fire it was was it a directed energy weapon as some suggest was it arson was it you know was it the electric company that didn't turn off their power lines the maui county um, maui county is suing the hawaii electric they say they're negligent in all of this, that they didn't turn off their power lines. You know this part of the story. They didn't turn off the power lines, but they did turn off the water. And they said, look, you guys had an opportunity to turn off your power lines after the National Weather Service issued their high wind alerts and their high wind warnings. Now, earlier that morning on August 8th, of course, there was a small fire. The police were able to put it out, 100% contained. Firefighters and police got that totally under control. But then it wasn't until 3 in the afternoon when the massive fire struck. But now, Hawaii Electric says they turned off their power lines six hours before the fire started. So that couldn't be the cause of it. They're saying, hey, don't look at us. Do you believe them, by the way? Let us know in the chat rooms right now if you believe them. Yes, I believe the Hawaii Electric Company that turned off a for-profit company, by the way. This is a for-profit company. They say, we didn't have anything to do with it. We turned off those power lines six hours ago. Just take their word for it. How many of you believe them? It's like Pfizer telling us they didn't know about the adverse effects for their vaccines. Uh, we, we know that they knew about this and they kept it quiet from us. So six days after the fire, the CEO of Hawaii Electric didn't have any info about the power lines being turned off. He was asked about this in a press conference. Six days. I don't know if he's going to show this, but there is. Okay, got it. Ray Magliazzi here. eBay Motors has the right parts at the right prices. Let's see. Tonight, the death toll of Maui tragically rising once again. 110 lives now confirmed lost. Started. We've got that video of that kind of explosion, that arc flash, and we've got 10 sensors in that community. Yep. Looks like an arc flash. Some sort of burst of light in the, in the woods, you know. Who knows what the source of it is, but it looks like an arc flash from electricity. The blue tinge to it. But who knows what that is. I don't know. Days after? Watch. Why didn't you shut off the power when the wind started to pick up? 
as I said earlier, it's still in the early days. We're still looking at all the information, and we haven't actually had a chance to do all of that at this time. With all due respect, it's been six days, though, so almost six days. And we've been putting everything we've got to helping our communities right now and our employees who are going through a lot and supporting them so that they can support the communities. Hmm. So to me, that would be an easy thing, though, to figure it out, wouldn't it be, right? Like you either either someone in your office issued an order or they didn't. You'd be able to track that chain of command. There'd be email exchanges. There would be... Uh, you would think that there would be a way to meter electricity. <laughs> right. They're so good at yeah, telling I mean, us how much we use. They can't figure out if they turned off their own power lines, their like substations. If uh, there's still... Go ahead, Philip. Go ahead. I was just gonna say maybe it's like that mysterious switch in the in the break room that nobody's sure what it does. It actually just turns off Maui's power, and somebody just flipped that, and nobody knew about it. It's like That's Homer Simpson yeah, going know. in. He flips up. <laughs> Don't. Oh, I press the wrong. I turn off the all of the entire city. You just can't figure that out. Right. Maybe you log into your portal and see where people being charged after this time that you said was turned off. You know, these things are not that hard to figure out no, in this day and age. They with a computer system that's running an entire electrical grid, a for-profit company, your company your computers would show power being turned off at the exact second that was that, that was carried out. She acts like she has to dig it out from under. We haven't had a chance to do that. Yeah, we're right dealing now. with a lot of rubble right now. Our whole families, our families are in disarray. We're just yeah. trying to make sure we're taking care of our community so we can't get those answers. We can't go and answer those I mean, questions. my freaking iPhone, for crying out loud, has the ability to tell me the exact moment that the device is powered down. I can go into the settings and see the cycling stages of my iPhone, for crying out loud. But Suddenly they, they got no out. information when Beyond you want it. Tells, just tells me but their PR they company it, hasn't given them the response yet. Right. Because oh, someone, we didn't realize someone was going to ask you at a press yeah. conference. We, we should yeah. have had those prepared remarks ready to go. Maybe Corinne Jean-Pierre can hand out some, some talking points for him. Beyond who started the fire, though, uh, and who stands to benefit from all of this, here are the other big questions that we have here on this show. Number one, what happened to the children? As, as of this hour, 2,000 children are missing. That's no small number. Sources I'm speaking with say that it's likely, highly likely, that many of these children have been taken off, sold off in child trafficking rings. What? This is textbook. This is textbook studies in disaster zones. It... Um... Disaster zones, they know people are going to go missing. It, it sadly is a, a very disgusting reality of human nature to take advantage of bad situations, whether it's on Wall Street, you know, buy when there's blood in the streets, or whether it's making people disappear when there's chaos and confusion, and they know that people are going to disappear. So who knows? We'll never know the truth of it, but. We won't know the details, but, w you know, we can definitely assume that um, some bad things have happened in the in the aftermath of there being no power and no no law in some of these places where, you know, there's just whatever's going on is going on and no one's being allowed to go in and report on it. The war zones is Tim Ballard on our show, of course, who Jim Caviezel played in the great movie The Sound of Freedom says disaster zones are the number one place where sex exploitation and child traffickers go in and exploit. Children are captured, sold off on the black market. Parents aren't around. Something's happened to the parents. This is a perfect opportunity. This happens all the time. This is not new. This is not something that we're making up. The number one way that children are captured is after a disaster. Wars, uh, hurricanes, typhoons, uh, earthquakes. Just look at Indonesia. Look at Ukraine. This is exactly what's happening might be uncomfortable to talk about, but it's true. And according to EV News today, the situation has been further inflamed by accus accusations downplaying the high number of child victims to protect the Biden administration and local Democrats. Over 2,000 children from Lahaina's public schools remain unaccounted for. Unaccounted for. The official death number still sits at 115 people dead. The number hasn't moved. That number is fishy at best, Criminal at worst, actually, and the number of missing doesn't actually add up. It's Right now, it's 388 missing, which is a total lie. Even CBS News, New York Magazine also, 
saying this number doesn't make sense and questioning these official numbers that we're getting, at least 1,100 people, and uh, that the FBI even revised their numbers to match, went jumped up hundreds when they revised their own list. What's going on here? So other reports have it over 2,000. But they're sticking with their 388 number. And New York Magazine asks, why are hundreds of people still missing on Maui? What, what is going on here? Well, I was wondering if maybe school hadn't started yet, um, but it's easy to find in the Hawaii Public School Department of Education. They started in August. Yeah. So those kids should be in school. Yeah. They should be in school, and the schools have them unaccounted for. To so this is the information that I found explaining why the kids of Lahaina were home on a school day. The Hawaii State Department of Education said that on August 8th, Lahaina's largest school the high school was closed early because of a power outage caused by strong winds from the incoming Category 4 Hurricane Dora. So even if the kids went to school, they were sent back home early while the parents were still at work. Not only that, but other local intermediate and elementary schools were supposed to reopen after the summer break the following day. This was another reason why more kids were at their residence instead of schools. As soon as news of missing children went viral on social media, netizens have been spinning conspiracy theories with many thinking that schools were de deliberately shut sending um children home in an emergency situation with a power outage and not notifying the parents seems kind of negligent to me but what do i know i'm just a conspiracy theorist uh, netizen online saying crazy things that make no sense over two thousand of them we don't know where they are so where are these missing children of maui We'd like some answers. We'd love for the governor to help us. We'd love for officials on the ground there, the sheriff's office and others to tell us, but we can't get answers. People are being kept from getting information and homeowners are being arrested now if they attempt to go to their house to see if their home is there. Weeks after the fires, here's the Washington Post reports, most residents are blocked from access to Lahaina homes. They can't get there. In fact, today being handed permission slips if they're able to go. Blue permission slips on their way to try to get back home if they're lucky if the sheriff's department will let them sources are telling me today that cell service is almost non-existent in this area spotty at best uh, government was supposed to bring in those starlink systems they were promising to try to get uh, some of the starlink systems but that hasn't happened to even try to get some you know whatsapp phone calls or like facetime audio phone calls using internet service to make phone calls with family members and others uh, or just to get some information out there they can't uh, and people are scared to leave their homes. People who still have homes are holed up and not wanting to leave. And now over the past few, the past few days, a large amount of black fencing is being erected to block out the viewpoint into the fire zone along the highway. This is just what the fence looks like here. It's like, it's not enough to just have it one, like be a barrier. It's got to be like taller, opaque. Than, opaque and taller than me. But, of course, they're saying that this is 300,000 feet of linear dust screening. And that's all it is. Don't worry about it. It's just for dust. Mm -hmm. Just And they got $3 million in emergency funding funding to pull, put this money, to put this out there. So just to be clear. How did they, go ahead. Uh, how did they block all the dust before this then? <laughs> right. I guess dust wasn't an <laughs> Dust is yeah. suddenly an issue now because of, because of the fires. Right. Um, look, Ash? I've been... I don't know why they're calling it dust. I, I would think that they're trying to contain the ash, maybe. I, I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to contribute to their excuses, but at the same time, maybe. Maybe it's le legitimate. I, I don't know. There's just a... It would be nice to get some information out of the zone from official sources, allow access. You know, why all the secrecy? That's the... You're... You are, you know, giving the conspiracy machine gas. That's all you're doing. By d denying information, you're creating a vacuum, and it's being filled by, you know, speculation because you're not allowing real info to come out. It's I don't understand bullshit. it because I've been in the media a long time, and I've been a you know journalist for a long time. I've covered the wildfires in Montana, hurricanes in Florida, uh, floods in West Virginia. I've never been kept from covering a fire zone before. I stood in like disgusting knee deep water that's like horrible sewage and no one said a word to me. They're like, oh, you're a reporter. That's what you do. Go there. But apparently you can't do any of that here. And they're keeping you from seeing this. This program, by the way, started on August 16th. 
to put up this fence. So, you know, eight days after this fire and they got $3 million in emergency funding to do it. Okay. What about the people of Lahaina? Like you're more concerned about a dust fence. Where they come from? Like, wh- how yeah. do you build this? That fence? where do you get the fence guys? Yeah. Where do you get this emergency fence guys to come in and do this? It's it's amazing. Um, and now this morning, on top of that, drones are now banned. It's a great great point, right? I mean, they they had to ship that out there, so they can't ship like food and aid out there, but they can get that that fence there and get the manpower organized to to put up a fence but they can't help people how does that make sense because their priority is the fence and hiding stuff i mean again they're just inflaming the 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 conspiracy machine and and you know people coming up with with ideas of what's going on because they're not telling us so if you want to fly a drone over this area uh good luck um you know, initial drone footage kind of came out but uh, at the time, but now you're not allowed to do it anymore. Officials have now outlawed drones. According to independent journalist Jeff Cygnus, who tried to do this, if you're on public property, you're no longer allowed to use drones. Public property. You can't use it. Cygnus also is reporting that unmarked police cars have been showing up, standing guard around the perimeter. So if you even... I love these, these like orders that have no basis in in law where suddenly something becomes illegal and you get arrested for something that there's no law saying that you can't do right it, doesn't that seem really american stop your car you're going to be told to get back in the car and go so these unmarked police cars with no you know hawaiian uh information on them at all popping up all over the place and being told to stay away, blocking the perimeter of this. Another another thing, I don't think I've ever seen a foreign police car. It's always domestic. Um, so this is very weird to see a Nissan. I, I've never seen a police vehicle that's Toyota, Honda, Nissan, never. Just just a, a comment. He says the National Guard told him to get back in his car, keep moving, and it's amazing that we can, by the way, deploy the National Guard to, to Lahaina, but not to the southern border. Just think about that for a second. So here's, listen to his discussion about this wall. Watch. There seems to be a huge emphasis on ensuring that the media and anyone else can't see what's going on here in Lahaina, West Maui. There are miles and miles of this black fence going up that was not here before that is obscuring ground zero and making sure no one can see what's going on inside of there from the road. No one can get in there. No one can take any pictures. And then I've also seen these weird foreign police cars showing up, these special police, What I, I'm not sure what to call them. This is a Nissan, but there's quite a large presence of these standing guard around the perimeter. We've also lost our ability to fly drones really anywhere near this area. Now, this 20-second clip here that I I tried to get out of my car and show what was going on, I was almost immediately, after these 20 seconds, National Guard came, chased me off, yelled at me, told me to get back in my car and keep moving. So you cannot pull over. You can't even stop your car anywhere near any of this anymore. Regardless, there is a massive human element to all of this, of course. Thousands of missing children, uh, adults that have lost everything. Uh, businesses destroyed because tourists won't come. Uh, businesses destroyed because of the fires. Uh, developers trying to buy up these people's lands, uh, and because a governor basically told you know tourists not to come to this area. This economy in ruins. Um, and there's now a concert that's a, a benefit concert that's about to unfold on September second. Our friends over at the Global Health Project um, are putting this together. Uh, Eric Clapton. Uh, they, by the way, they, it's amazing. They called them. They're like, you know, Eric, would you like to be a part of this? He said, absolutely. I will do it. I'll clear my calendar. Um, these other artists that are also part of this concert, all proceeds, 100% of the proceeds will go to the victims uh, of these fires. Um, you can see on the screen there, you can text the word Mahalo to 53-555 to donate. One of the organizers is Dr. Kat Lindley from the Global Health Project. I had a chance to speak with her just a few minutes ago to ask her about the human element of this and what we can expect from this event. Listen. 
Dr. Kat Lindley joins us now. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, can you tell us about this event that Global Health Project is putting on to save Maui right now? Can you tell us about the September 2nd concert? And then I want to get into more specifics about what's happening to the children and the people on Maui. Yeah, so we felt that, you know, government response has been horrible. The people are in need and um, no one is really doing anything. And one of the things that we decided as Global Health Project is to figure out the way to help as many people as we can, no matter what the um, you know subject is. We talked about the oath in the past, but now we see people in need and we uh, you know kind of started calling friends in our contact list and decided to do this benefit uh, concert that's gonna benefit um, the residents of Lahaina 100% because it's going to go through a church in uh, um, Calvary Chapel in South Maui. A friend of mine who is a pediatric cardiologist, Dr. Kirk Milhone, is actually a pastor there as well. And the, his church has been helping uh, people boots on the ground. And for us, it's really important to make sure that everything goes directly to them. There is no you know, red tape on how they're going to get the help. Great. So the 100% of the proceeds will go to the victims uh, in Lahaina, which is amazing. And I want to put this up yes. on the screen again. If you text the word Mahalo to 53-555 to donate, of course, uh, Eric Clapton will be a part of the concert um, as well. Um, and that's going to be uh, fantastic. Um, I want to talk about your contacts there at the hospital. What are you hearing about the victims? What are you hearing about them being able to get the help that they need on the island? From things you know that I've heard, um, especially you now coming from uh, Dr. Kirk Milhone and his wife, who are uh, residents of Maui, they all feel that we need to make sure that uh, this outpouring of help continues. And one of the ways people can just do it is continue your plans to visit Maui. Don't just cancel your reservations. Maui is going to need help for a long time. So even if you are you know visiting a hotel on a different part of the island. Uh, the economy needs to continue flourishing because th this need is going to be for a long time. Some of the stories that I think we all have heard are the stories of children being lost. And, you know, I, I was just listening actually to Glenn Beck this morning and uh, a pastor that's helping from another church who is also on the ground was saying um, there was a mother who um, was allowed to go back into her house and her son, her the you know her son's bedroom was still fairly intact, and he was sitting on the bed holding to his dog. I have five kids. I don't know how many you have, but Three, I yeah. think the biggest trauma for parents is for something to happen to our children. You know, I I hope and pray fairly constantly that I do not outlive my children, um, and um, you know. There are so many kids lost, so many kids that had to stay home because the schools were out and things like that. And um, it doesn't matter how incompetent you are. It's just like I can't even imagine that this has been allowed to happen. The great concern we have here at Redacted, of course, is about the children and the reports as we've been covering here tonight about the 2,000 uh, uh, parents. I mean, now that they just described that, I, I start to wonder if the reason that they won't let anybody in there is is for exactly what was just described. H how many how many situations like that are there? And they probably don't want that to be seen. the The extent of the the negligence and mishandling of. Uh, the, specifically the children being home and the in some cases the adults not knowing that their children were home obviously the ones who weren't in school yet the adults knew about that but the ones who were sent home there's a lot of questions about whether the parents knew that these children were not in school at the point that the fires broke out at at which point the only way as a parent you're headed for that danger zone is if you know your kids are trapped there if you don't know you're going to be like, well, stay away. Let's go get to a safe place and, and, and then meet up with our children who are supposed to be in school. So, good God. Missing children, unaccounted for in the school system and missing. And, of course, 
something we've covered extensively here on our show is about these disaster zones being used for child trafficking. And that is a great concern. So these numbers are really mixed right now. Uh, the, the missing, the official number is 388, but there are other reports saying it's, it's well into the thousands. And there's these conflicting numbers about the missing. Parents know that their children are missing or they've been scooped up if the parents are now considered deceased. People coming in under the guise of trying to help and then taking these children away from this area. Uh, that, that, is a, that is a terrible concern, is it not? It's a huge uh, concern because, um, you know, society can be um, measured, in my opinion, by what it does to its children. And if we can, if we, if we cannot protect our children, and if we cannot, um, you know, ensure that they live happy lives, I don't think that we are doing our job as society. And you know, being a parent, being uh, just a human being, the the stories that are coming out are just heart-wrenching and we need to make sure that we all stand together um hearing that our government was willing to give seven hundred dollars to a household right uh for whatever reason it's just you would think with all the money we have given to the rest of the world we could do a lot more uh for the citizens of the, of this country and the fact that we can't this is why people are coming together there are so many churches out there so many organizations that are doing the job that government should have done and we need to make sure that this continues because you know yeah i made a comment about you know the 40 billion sent to ukraine and and of course you know certain people were arguing that it's separate money and all this stuff and it's it's not about what pool of money comes from it's about where the priorities of this government lie and it seems like they only are interested in spending money on expanding the sphere of western influence and and um you don't do that by spending money directly you know they want uh, they want to invest that money so that it returns dividends of power and helping American citizens that are already you know underneath the government doesn't expand that sphere of Western influence and power um, there seems to be a lot of things that um, are, are suddenly a topic of discussion regarding children uh, versus how they've traditionally been protected um, suddenly we want them to be exposed to adult subject matter and be introduced to adult concepts and um, problems and dynamics at a very young age so there's you know some very questionable things going on about society not just with this discrete moment that's happening right now as we speak in Hawaii but just as a general topic of discussion, I, I, I would like to know if it's not about adults, then why are we bringing adult things into the spaces um, normally? I mean, if it is about adults, then, then let adults do their thing in adult spaces. When you start bringing adult subject matter into spaces dominated by children, like schools, public parks, things like that, and you want to do adult sexualized type things in those spaces is it about the adults is there a reason that they're trying to do it in spaces that are conventionally not you know done like it's just not something that has ever been done we've never brought any sort of sexual anything into schools we did sexual ed at the, you know the adolescent period teenage period to just inform them but it's never been a push like this and it's it's very weird and it doesn't feel like it's going in a good safe positive direction for the children it feels like it's an adult agenda and the children are uh, an expense there this agenda is at the expense of children not for their benefit you know today in the news cycle is the hurricane in Florida and that's a huge big thing but people are gonna forget Maui and we just need to make sure that they never forget well, we'll put this back up here on the screen again. The Save Maui event uh, happens on September 2nd at 8 p.m. Eastern time. It'll be featured exclusively uh, on Rumble. It'll be live streamed on Rumble. Eric Clapton, uh, a part of it as well. Um, five times August. 
um, among others. And you can text the word Mahalo to 53-555 if you want to donate anything that you can to contribute. Again, 100% of the proceeds will go to the victims of those fires. Uh, and thank you to Dr. Kat Lindley for helping to organize this event and being a part of it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me and speaking about the event. I just want to mention one thing. I hope that everyone supported these artists that are going to participate in this event because as soon as we asked, everyone said yes. It was make, I'll make sure that my calendar is clear. And I, I just hope that everyone um, supports them and uh, come and support our event as well. Wonderful. Well, it's great to hear. It's great to hear. Dr. Kat Lindley, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. And in the chat, people are saying, you know, get Tim Ballard on the case. In fact, I reached out to Tim, Tim and his team today to look into this. So hope to have an update on what they find with all these missing children out there. Um, and a lot of people will say, you know, well, where were the kids? Where were the parents not speaking out about their missing children? And many, many of them are, of course. Uh, but, you know, again, there's so many more that are missing, so many parents that are also been killed in this that we don't know or unaccounted for, and these numbers are shifting. So 800 missing, but then some are saying 300. Now it's over 1,100. Is it up to 2,000 with the 2,000 kids? How do you how do you square only 388 missing when there's over 2,000 kids missing? The numbers just don't make sense. Then you've got a you've got a police chief also in this who is, you know, there's a lot of questions about this police chief who who is also the coroner. Yep which as many people point out is illegal and was also in part of the Las Vegas uh, there during the, of course the strip shooting um, and is now here and asked for a massive raise and was granted this massive raise. So there's a lot of really weird um, inconsistencies with these numbers and the people involved in this. And I hope that we get um, some answers in the coming days here. Yeah. So. This story is fishy. Very. I'll get out. Yeah. Thank you so much for someone who asked for a raise in the middle of a disaster seems like a disaster profiteer you got hired for the job you took the job suddenly you demand a raise when when this happens why what are you doing extra that that um that you deserve a raise is there something additional that you're doing that you are asking for money in exchange for that wasn't already part of your job description this is this is within your job description you know so it's uh it's important that we don't let america's prone to moving on to the next thing you know seems like when the ukraine thing started we forgot all about the the medical emergency and then maui is happening and and are we going to move on to the next thing and forget about this i really hope not i really hope that people are going to keep talking about this keep asking for answers keep asking for the story to be explained to us in a transparent mer manner keep asking for media to to be allowed to access and document what is going on so that the, the public understands how our public servants are handling this case because right now with the media blackout they can be doing whatever they want and there's no accountability to us the taxpayer their boss we get no access we're we're supposed to have access to information to the site especially if you're a resident it's your land government's denying you from going and seeing what's happening I'm not saying there's not reasons but transparency instead of lies and and information blackouts is is the path that is supposed to be chosen and that is not the behavior that we're seeing we cannot reward people for behaving in a manner that is not congruent to the best interest to the best interest of the public they're public servants they should be serving the public and if they're not then we know we do, we there's more that needs to be looked into than just the events of the fire and the missing people we also need to understand why was there such a failure at the leadership level from the pre-fire handling to the emergency handling during the fire and now the effort to recover there seems to be no good uh, clear leadership that is um, making people believe that the people in charge are capable of doing their jobs so I hope that that uh, this was enlightening I'm just trying to shine 
a light on the issue and get more exposure to it. So everyone take care and I'll talk to you again soon.